so today is the flight data video. Uh, so this is going to be video number 10, I believe, in the Silk Plus videos, uh, one of the Silk Plus tutorial videos. Um, so this is going to be a little bit more of a big one. Uh, so get ready, sit down, relax, get a drink, um, and let's just dive right into it. So here's the project. Um, there's a very large, uh, large data set file or a spreadsheet file from uh, flight data. Um, basically we're just going to download it. I'll provide the link to it in the description. Um, basically download the file, extract it. Um, we already have some given code to read in the file. Um, we already have the given flight object file, so we have the classes already that uh, map to the file. Um, what else do we have? We have a file path, uh, so we know where to reference the file. We got max flights, so that we can we can choose how many um, how many flights from this file we grab. Uh, I think there's about seven million nine thousand something. Um, so we could either just grab one million rows. We could grab all the rows. We could grab one row. Um, string method gives us info about each flight so uh, just a bunch of basic stuff of, of what we're given um, there's some links to the silk plus tutorials but we've already got those um, okay so here's the first thing we got to try so try using single reducer to sum up the departure delays for all the flights in parallel so Basically, we know how to do this because uh, we already went through a couple examples of this. Um, number of threads should be equal to the number of flights in the array. Um, this one, I'm not too sure if this makes too much sense since the Silk Plus for loop actually specifies its own optimal grain size based on the number of iterations and the number of available threads that we have. And let's say we grab a million flights, then that's a million threads, and we've only got eight eight threads on this system. So um, I believe that the built-in um, Silk Four, when it um, when it predicts its own grain size, I think it'll be fine on its own if we don't if we don't specify the grain size on our own. So that should be fine. I uh, should be able to do something like this. So for the delay, yeah, so if we grab the delay, we grab its departure time and subtract it from the scheduled departure time. So if a flight left early, this value is going to be negative. If a flight left late, this value is going to be positive. And then we're just going to add them all to the reducer and then basically time it and see how it does in comparison to the sequential. Um, We'll try it for a small input size, a large input size, and something in the middle. So let's go over to the code. Okay, so so now we still have our original Hello Silk file, which is pretty full now. Um, we have our flight file, which is just our class, which maps to the maps to the spreadsheet. Um, we've got our CSV utility file, which allows us to read read the spreadsheet file and map them all to flight objects. Um, so these files are all given. You don't really need to understand how they all work. Um, if you want, by all means, uh, go for it, but it's, it's not necessary. Uh, here are the header files. Again, just mapping to the files, specifying the function pointers, or the function headers, rather. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, as, for the, as for the actual spreadsheet file, um, in order for it to work, well, for me, I simply specified the path as the file name, and then I put it in put it in the same folder that the 
actual source files in. So I didn't put it in the release folder, I didn't put it in the project x64 folder, I just put it right in the same folder that the source code is in. So hopefully that works for you. If not, just fool around with it and make sure that when you print out your first, when you print out a flight, that you uh, that you're actually getting some data put into it. I know that in the header files, it gives you it gives you default values here. If there was no flight or if the flight was invalid, all of these values are going to be either minus one or N A. Um, there might be some that are null. Maybe maybe these might be null. Um, but yeah, so just make sure that at least you have some data in here um, when you read in the flights to make sure that you read in the file properly. Um, other than that, uh, let's just load in. Okay, so let's start off in main. Um, basically, we're going to specify as max flights to be, so if we, if we gave it a minus one up here, so right now I've got it set to 7,900,000. But if you set it to minus one, the code will read all of the rows in the file. So this guy simply just checks if if you give it minus one, it'll grab everything in like the size is going to be equal to the number of rows in the file. Otherwise, if we didn't give it minus one, our number of flights is going to be whatever we specified up here. So if we gave this eight thousand this would be 8,000. Um, print out the size. Here's where we're initializing our array of flights um, to the amount of flights that we're going to grab. So we're only we're only creating space for the number of flights that we need. Um, <clears throat> this is us calling the uh, CSV utility function for read flights. So we're going to send it the file path. We're going to send it the flights, the empty flights array. I'm going to get send it how many flights we want. So um, after you call this line, you're going to want to go ahead and go. Uh, you can just print F. Um, you could print the first flight. And I think it's called to string like that. And then, oh, flights. There you go. Should be fine. I have it as a should be fine. There we go. Put it output. So yeah, for whatever reason, it still shows some errors. But because we're in Silk Plus, it's because of it messes with IntelliSense. So whenever you get all these IntelliSense errors, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that your code's broken. It just means that you're using some syntax that. Visual Studio is not used to. Even though we are using the Intel C++ compiler, when we do go build, make sure that you go to the output tab and just make sure it says succeeded. If it says succeeded, it doesn't matter what's wrong in here because it still works. So yeah, so you want to do this print here just to make sure that you have data in your first flight. It changes to one, two, three, four, five, whatever, just to make sure that you have stuff just for debugging purposes. Um, so actually, I'll leave this commented out so that you can test it yourself when you download the file. Um, so yeah, okay. So here's us doing. Here's us doing the first question. So use a single reducer to sum up the departure delays. So we're gonna start our timer. We're gonna calculate the delays. We're gonna give it flights. Give it the number of flights in the timer, um, grab the total delay from the reducer, print it, and then we'll just determine whether or not the flights, there were more flights that were ahead of schedule or more flights were behind schedule. So that means if this value, if the total delay is negative, that means most flights were ahead of schedule, so they were able to leave early. Um, and then if this value is positive, then there were a few flights that were actually 
delayed and they were behind schedule. Um, so let's go ahead and go to this calculate delays uh, method so we know it, how this works. So calculate delays is right here. We've got our reducer defined up here. So we're calling it, we're giving it a long value uh, just in case we get some really, really large delay uh, values. And so we're initializing our sum delay to zero. <clears throat> so in this method, basically all we're doing is a silk for loop um, going through the entire flights array. Um, we're grabbing the, the flight based on the index we're at, and then we're checking to make sure that the flight is valid. So we have to make sure that none of these um, None of these are equal to one, minus one, I mean. And this is actually a bug. We're going to want to change this to end. So you want to make sure they're both not minus one. And then check the delay by doing the subtraction, and then add that to the reducer. And then we just keep on going and doing this in parallel until we're done. And then we have our reducer, which is filled with all these different uh, sum delay values that we still have to reduce when we call get value. So that's what we're doing right here. Sum delay dot get value. So this is going to call reduce on our reducer and grab our value. And that's how we'll know whether or not things were behind schedule or ahead of schedule. So we, if we run that, then we'll get run that, we'll get a value. It will take a while to read in the file, but that's just because we have seven million rows to read. Um, if I were to say put a thousand, then it'll take much less time. But yeah, I guess we'll wait for it and uh, see how it goes. Um, we're going to get a little bit more output because I actually did the rest of these questions in advance. So uh, just ignore that. Just look at the first. Just look at the first output to see how fast our algorithm went. There we go. So 0.39 seconds, basically. And we had a positive delay value, so there were a lot of late flights. So we see that this works here. Doing this, okay. So yeah, we could just move on to the next question. Um, well, I guess we could do it for a smaller value. So instead of seven million nine thousand, let's just try it for a thousand. Build it run it, con um, control F5, and almost instantaneous, uh, 0 0.002 seconds. So basically in, in zero time, and we calculated 30,000 minutes for the delay. So uh, let's do something around in the middle. So if there were 7 million uh, flights, let's go uh, 3,500,000. Right dab smack in the middle. So one of them, uh, the seven million one, it ran in about 0.4 seconds. The 1,000 one ran in virtually 0 0.005 seconds. Now this one's going to be right in the middle. So I'm predicting probably 0 0.2 seconds, but I could be wrong. Okay, so yeah, there we go. It was 0.2 seconds, just as I predicted. So, um, yeah, so there we go. Um, for the next question, um, in the last step, we used one reducer for the whole array. This requires threads, which requires a lot of overhead. Um, this actually is a little bit, this actually requires many views. Um, because we're splitting up the 
amount of work to do in a silk for loop. Um, this actually might not create that many views because, like I said, the difference, the big difference between the silk for loop and the, using silk spawn and silk sync is that the silk for does a very good job of splitting up the work and using a threshold called the grain size to determine how many iterations to do in parallel. So since the Silk 4 is very dynamic in that sense, um, it actually takes care of this on its own. Um, and there's usually not that much overhead because it dynamically guesses its own optimal grain size. And once it goes down to a certain size, it'll run the rest of the loops in serial, which is totally fine. Um, but let's just go ahead and assume that there is still overhead from doing this, and um, there's a chance that it'll, it'll perform poorly. So one way to reduce this is to do multi-stage reductions, uh, which means using several reducers one at a time. So in this approach we're basically splitting it the array um, into many equal sized chunks. So let's say that we chose a million a million flights and we split it into a thousand different arrays. We would have a thousand elements in each array because a thousand times a thousand is a million. Um, if we had three and a half million uh, we would divide that by a thousand and each of our arrays would have 3,500 flights in it. So yeah, let's see if our size is one million, split it with a thousand chunks, each chunk size a thousand. So the idea is to loop through the chunks in series using a regular loop without parallelism. And for each iteration, we would have one reducer for the chunk that we're looking at and we'll run it. <clears throat> I will store the partial result from this reducer in a temporary array. Um, I don't think you have to use a temporary array. You just need to have a variable to add the reducer result, results into. Um, I'll show you that in the code in a, in a second. I have to make a thousand elements long, so yeah, don't worry. I have to worry about that. <clears throat> this way we're only running a thousand elements at a time in parallel as opposed to one million, so we don't have to deal with that much overhead um, when you're done the loop, the temporary array. Well, in this case, it'll be our um, global variable. Contains the sum for each of the thousand chunks, and you just um, add them all up. Uh, multi stage approach is a little bit tricky. Get some good stuff done. Yeah, so it wants, he wants to know if it performs any better than the approach that we just coded. So go back into the code, check out what we're doing. So over here is us timing our delays without using chunks. Um, now over here, we're gonna split we're gonna split our flights up into a thousand chunks, no matter what. So if we have Thirty three three and a half million flights. We're still going to split into a thousand chunks. If we have seven million flights, we're still still going to split it into a thousand chunks. If we have one thousand flights, we're going to still split it into a thousand chunks. So, for max flights, we're going to assume. Well, we're not going to assume. Uh, we're just going to run. We're just going to run this part of the question. If we chose a flight size of at least a thousand, and that the size is evenly divisible by a thousand. So if if our size, given size is a multiple of a thousand, then we'll be able to split it into equal chunks. Otherwise we'll have some chunks that have different amounts of elements in it and it won't exactly be uh, too clean. So we're just going to make this assumption. So I think in this file there's actually seven million nine thousand and four hundred something. So as a max we would just put seven million 9,000. Something like that. Um, and this is pretty much the same as reading 
almost the whole file. And then so that'll be our max value and our min value will be a thousand. So let's just keep it at our max max value here. Okay, so that's that's just us doing this check. And then uh, this is all basically uh, a copy and paste of what we did previously, except a little bit different things. So our total delay variable, which was up here, uh, we're just resetting it back to zero uh, so that we can calculate the delay once more without having to use more memory. Here's our total time that we're going to take. Um, over here, all we had to do was time it once and then basically calculate how long it took when we actually printed out. But over here, we're actually splitting it into chunks and we're timing how long it takes to calculate each chunk. So we're going to have a total time variable to add it for every iteration. Um, so here's us calculating the number of elements. Uh, since we know that size mod 1000 is equal to zero, we know that the number of elements is going to be an integer. Um, so size divided by 1000 is going to give us how many elements to put into each chunk. So here's us specifying the chunk, and we're setting it as an array of size elements. Um, here's our for loop that we're running in serial. Um, Yeah, running a, a regular for loop, no parallelism. So we're just going to do a for loop through every single one of the elements. But every single time, so we're just going to uh, fill in this array. We're going to do it by mod elements so that our index never goes above the number of elements that we have in the array. Um, and we're just going to put in each new flight. Um, so once we get to elements, elements. so once we have elements number of flights in our chunk, once, we, once this is filled up, every thousand elements, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start the clock. We're going to calculate a delay for that chunk. We're going to add it to our total delay. Then we're going to stop the clock. And then we're going to add our total time up for however long it took. So. We're timing it and storing it in total time, and then we're calculating the chunks, and for each time we calculate it, we add it to our total delay, which starts off as zero. And then once we're done doing all of this, we're free to release the memory that we allocated for chunk, and then we can print our total delay, determine whether or not flights were ahead of schedule or behind schedule, and calculate what our or print what our total time was. Um, so that's pretty much it for that. If we go in here, calculate delays with chunks, it'll show us using a local reducer. And then we're doing our silk for loop in parallel, just like the same thing we did in this one. Um, this was a bug, so let's fix this. This is supposed to be and, because you might have a departure time, but you might not have a scheduled departure time and therefore you might get a bunch of unnecessary or inaccurate negative values. So just make sure everything is not minus one. Uh, use and instead of or. That was my mistake. Um, calculate the delay the exact same way we did before. Add it to our reducer. But then at the end, once we're done doing this parallelism for this one chunk, we're going to return the value that we just calculated. So we're going we're gonna to return the reduction of this reducer. So every time this runs, it's going to return the delay for that chunk. And that's why um, I didn't need to use an array of um, temporary reduced values for the timing. Uh, basically, I'm just adding it up from a local or a global variable. No, it's a local variable uh, for a delay. So that's what we're doing there. And timing it. That's pretty much it. Um, if if the number of flights doesn't satisfy this condition here, I just have an else where we're printing out that we're not calculating the delay with chunks because the size isn't a multiple of a thousand. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and for comparison purposes, afterwards I actually uh, did it 
without chunks, but I did it in serial. So I'm doing the timing, and the calculating the delays, and the end, except we're doing it. We're doing it with um, no for loop or no parallelism. So if we go back here to calculate delays, see how we're using a silk for, and we're adding to a reducer. Well, instead of having a reducer, we just have a serial uh, delay, and we're basically changing it from a silk for to a regular for. We're doing the same check. We're going to change this to an end. And then basically calculate the delay. And since we're doing this in serial, we don't need a reducer. We just need to add it to the global sum. And then that's it. Um, so let's go ahead and build this and run it. And it's going to take a little bit because I said it actually, let's close this. Let's just do it for a smaller value. Uh, let's just go 50,000 just to save time. <clears throat> but I will post the results for 1,000 and then the results for uh, a million or three and a half million and then for seven million. Okay, so in parallel, using chunks, or using no chunks, we got 0 0.007 seconds. Uh, calculating with chunks is actually, we're getting the same uh, delay amount, so that's good. Um, calculating in 0 0.021 seconds, so this was actually three times slower than the implementation without the chunks. And then in serial, it looks like the serial version is actually somewhere in the middle, so it's faster than the chunk approach in parallel, but it's slower than the non-chunked parallel, which kind of makes sense because when we use chunks, we're allocating more memory. We are calculating several values rather than just doing one big parallel loop and then doing it on um, like just one value, one reducer. We're actually creating memory and overhead for several reducers, so I can see why this can be a little bit slower. Um, but yeah, so yeah, those, those are the results. So anyways, let's move on to the next question. Um, next question would be, yeah, so does it perform any better than the single reduction algorithm? So the answer for this was no. Basically, the first approach was the best one. Okay, so so far we've been using reducers to do math or addition. Reducers can also be used to filter a data set. So let's say we wanted to find the total number of flights that departed in January 2008. See if you can use another type of reducer to do this. Don't worry about the multi-stage reduction. Just use a single reducer for the whole array. So, um, wait a second. How does the reduction time for this type compare with our addition? Generally, we expect this to take longer. Okay, so I think this is asking how, this is asking us to compare uh, this new approach for, with our previous approach, but we're actually gathering different data. So this, the, if we timed these and compared these, it actually wouldn't really make too much sense to compare them because we're, like January 2008, that's, January is one month out of 12 months. So we'd only be adding one twelfth of the data in the flights to our reducers. Whereas when we were doing our addition reducer, we were making a reducer and we were calculating values for every single flight. In here, we're not going to be adding every single flight to the reducer. So we're going to, we're definitely going to get much less work for this, um, depending on, on how the, how the reducer works. So since we've been using the op add addition reducer, uh, we're going to be using the list append reducer for this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the flights in parallel like we did before, except we're going to check if the flight is January for the month and 2008 for the year. And then if it is, we're going to add it to the reducer and keep on going. And then once we're done doing all of our parallel code, we're going to call reduce on the list to get the number of items that we um, that we calculated. So that would be, no, 
that would be what we're doing there. So, go back to main, doing all our flight stuff here, with without chunks, we're doing it in serial. Okay, so here we are in parallel, finding the total number of January flights. So, we're going to start the clock, we're going to call a method to get the number of January flights, and then we're going to end the clock, and let, let everyone know how long it took. We're also going to do it in serial rather than parallel, just for comparison purposes. Since we can't really compare these tests to up here, because the data is completely uh, being used completely differently, um, I'm just going to compare the parallel version of this with the serial version of this. So, um, same exact thing, start the clock, get the number of flights, end the clock, let us know how long it took. And then since this is the last uh, implementation they want us to try. Uh, we're just going to clean up our our flights list and then end. So let's go over here to get number of January flights to see how this works. <clears throat> so what we're doing here is we're creating a reducer of type op list append of flights. Um, we're going to do our silk for loop. We're going to check if the year is 2008 and the month is one for January, and then if it is, we're just going to push a flight onto the flights reducer list. Um, so if we go over to the flight header, you'll see that it's int year and int month. Um, if it's not minus one, then it's going to be 2008 and one for the flight that we're looking for, and it could be whatever, whatever else you, whatever else for any other flight. So basically that's how I figured out what to do with these tests right here. And so we add all these January 2008 flights to the reducer in parallel. Once we're done doing it, we're going to uh, grab a list and we're going to get the value from the reducer. So here's us reducing the list. And then we're going to simply print out the list, the size of the list and that'll give us the number of January flights. Um, doing it in serial is basically, um, instead of a flights list reducer, we're just gonna have um, an integer. Um, we actually could have done this another way. Actually, yeah. Let's uh, just quickly, let's quickly do it here. So we can actually do the parallel version two different ways. We can do it do it with list reducer and we can do it with op add reducer. Let's we'll call that add. We'll have to copy paste that. Okay, so go back up here and yeah, so instead of having a flight reducer, we could just have another op add reducer to have a count. And then if the year is 2008 and the month is 1, then we just add to that count. And then at the end we get the value and just basically the same way we did the basic op add reducers. So let's go ahead and copy this. Paste it here. Call this add, I believe. And let's just grab this guy. We'll still call it flights reducer just to plus equals it. And we're just going to add one to it. Um, with reducers, it actually supports plus plus, so I'm just going to do that just to make it nice and neat. Um, and then we don't need to do that get value there, we just have to do the get at all. So I'm predicting that this is going to be faster than the the one that uses the list operation because we're doing more we're doing more stuff to handle lists and then we're actually making it spit out the size of the list whereas here we're just starting with a zero count and then you know 
printing out that count. So let's go ahead, build, and run this. Uh oh. Okay, so it looks like it's not going to let me do this when I thought it would. So try that then. There we go. Okay. So with the list reducer 0 0.013 and for the op add reducer yeah, 0 0.001. So definitely the op add reducer um, produce um, performs much better than the list reducer, but it might not be that might not be the comparison between the reducers. It just probably just the fact that with the list reducer we actually had to define a list in memory and call the get value on the reducer. So it just took us a little bit extra time to allocate that extra memory to reference the size of that list. Um, whereas here we only needed a single variable for our reducer and then we just called the get value on it. Over here we needed to call the get value and then put it into a list that we allocated and then print the size of it. So that's probably what caused the extra delay here. Um, I think that if we didn't have do if we stopped the timer before we um, if we stopped the timer before we allocated that other list when we called reduction on it and we only timed that silk for loop um, I think these would probably be virtually the same um, but yeah compared to the serial version it looks like it took zero seconds so these parallel implementations are actually performing a little bit worse than the serial version, but that's because we're using a, a reasonably small um, size. So if we switch over to, you know, 7,000,000, build and run. Oh, yeah, and this read flights function basically uses our CSV utility file forgot to show you that. It just uh, prints out the certain progress percent and that's pretty much it. It just reads in the files and puts them into the past array. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and run this. It's going to take a little bit. Um, since we're doing it in 7 million, we could open up our little open up our little task manager and check and make sure that um, we're actually using all the cores. Since it's only um, an array of 7 million items, however, it's probably going to not go to the full 100 because these these are actually processing quite fast. Um, in our previous examples, we've been using um, arrays of size 137, and those are only been taking like two or three seconds. So. Um, this might not go to the full 100 for a long time. Yeah, I saw it jump up to 74, but that was about it. But it was on every single core. So every single core did do a lot of work, but the fact that it did it so fast, it never actually had to had the time to go all the way up to 100. <clears throat> okay, so for a larger, well, for the largest n size we can manage from this file, it seems that our parallel without chunks is faster for the first question. Um, we're still getting the same values, so we know that each approach is getting the correct um, value. And then for the parallel, or for the January flights, rather, um, I was right in guessing that the op add reducer would be much quicker doing it in parallel than doing it with a list reducer. Um, it looks like it's about one to about four and a half times slower or four and a half times faster than the list reducer. And then <clears throat> the serial version is actually faster than the list reducer because again the fact that we're allocating more memory for this list. So there you go. Uh, sorry, the video was pretty long. Um, we did go through quite a few examples. Um, and if you if you weren't able to follow along, that's fine because I'm going to be posting this file up on the uh, 
video description again, as always, so that you can test it and tweak it, fool around with it however you want. I'm sure there's something I probably missed or something I might have done wrong, so all you experts out there can check out the file and just let me know in the comments. Alright, thanks.